guys, it's Alex Torelli, and welcome back to The Hand of the Day. Today's question comes from one of my readers, Sam, who writes to me about a hand he played, and he was playing at the Rio, 2-5 no limit. He just gets moved to a new table, buys in for 500, and he's playing about one orbit, and the guy to his left is some crazy European kid playing every hand. His read is that this guy's kind of a maniac, three betting all the time, going aggro, wins all the pots. Sam is under the gun plus one. He's in second position in a nine-handed game with two jacks. He opens to $20, and the kid to his left, the crazy European guy, makes it 55 to go. Folds back around to Sam, and he opts to just flat call. His plan is to trap his opponent here. He's pretty sure the guy is weak, and he wants to leave him in the pot and let him barrel away. So he just calls, good plan, Sam. And we go heads up to the flop. 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 The flop comes 9-6-2 with two clubs. And Sam, whose plan was to trap his opponent, now bets out 55. So I don't know what he's thinking here because his plan was to flat call out of position to presumably trap his opponent. By my book, trapping your opponent means letting him have the reins and continue to barrel away, especially the crazy European kid who's been barreling all the time. So now by betting into him, you take away the lead that he has in the hand. So I'm not sure that I love betting here because you have to ask yourself, what am I hoping to accomplish? Presumably by betting, you give the crazy guy a chance to just fold his hand and get away for very cheap and just give up the pot. So if by betting here, you have to have the plan for him to either float you on the flop, which is a much higher level of thought, and it's something that you know you have to have a decent amount of history with your opponent to know he's capable of doing, or you have to hope he's gonna bluff raise you on the flop. At which point, presumably you're gonna go all in and take down the hand, um, or force him to put in a lot of money with the worst hand. So unless you had that plan, uh, I don't like betting in here on the flop. I'd much rather check call or check raise and trying to induce him to shove, or just you know check call and let him keep barreling away. Uh, that being said, betting could have merit. Um, it just depends on what you know about your opponent, but you have to have the right logic because just doing the right action isn't correct if you're doing it for the wrong reason. Because in the long run, it's not gonna net you the most amount of money, okay? That's very important to keep in mind here. Anyway, we bet the flop, your opponent calls, and now we are on to the turn. The turn comes a queen of clubs. So there's three clubs on the board, we have two jacks, we don't have the jack of clubs. It's a terrible card for us. We're out of position, our opponent represented strength pre-flop by three betting, he could have a flush, he could have an overpair, he could have anything, we don't really know what to do, and now the pot's getting big and we don't have a lot of chips left relative to the pot, and, and, and now we're out of position and the club comes, what do we do? So Sam is, decides to bet out $140 here, which is a decent sized bet, and I don't really know, again, why we're betting here. I, it, it could be, it could have merit in some very extreme situations, but I, I like it a lot less than the flop bet, to be honest, Sam, and, I, and here's why. Betting on the turn, now really compresses the possible holdings that you could have down to a very small amount. Number one, it's very hard for you to be bluffing in this spot. And let's look at why. You called a ra you raised under the gun plus one, which signifies strength. You called a re-raise out of position, which means you have to have something. If you were bluffing, you might have re-raised pre-flop, but you called out of position. So you gotta have something. Then you bet the flop into the crazy guy. Now, the crazy guy might be crazy, but he's a 23-year-old poker player. He's probably smart. He knows that he's crazy. So he knows for you to bet into him on the flop, you gotta have something, because no one bets into the crazy person with nothing. Then you bet into again, bet him into him again on the turn when the club came. So at this point, it's pretty impossible for you to be bluffing. I mean, ask yourself, what hands do I play this way that's a bluff? Not that many. So it means that your opponent is going to react to the likely hands that you have and that you are representing. By you representing an immense amount of strength, your opponent can only put in money in the pot if he has strength as well. So you're really encouraging him to fold unless he has a hand that beats yours. Secondly, it's really hard to be inducing a bluff here with this bet sizing on this particular turn. 
In order for you to bet profitably, you have to hope your opponent puts money in the pot with a worse hand. Now that could happen by number one, him thinking you're bluffing, which we already said is pretty unlikely. Or number two, you inducing him to bluff. So I think that it's gonna be pretty hard to induce him to bluff here. Number one, because we, don't, we still don't know what your opponent has. He could still have you smashed. Uh, he could have caught up on the turn. He could have hit a queen on the turn if he was floating with something like king queen. And if he does decide to bluff, he's probably gonna have either A, a lot of equity. He's gonna have a, a flush draw or he's gonna have something. Or B, he's gonna have you beat. So it doesn't really help you to induce your opponent to put in money in the pot, given the things that we know about your image and the likely hands that you could have and the likely hands your opponent could have. So I don't, I'm not in love with betting here. I would much prefer to check. Hopefully it goes check, check on the turn. We could reevaluate on the river. We're out of position. We're building the pot, which makes us have less information about where we are in the hand. And if our opponent was floating us on the flop, if we check to him, he's definitely gonna bet and you get a chance to trap him, which was your plan the entire time. So I would much prefer to check the turn here, um, given all the possibilities of hands our opponent could have. It could work out for you this time. It might work out, it might not, but in the long run, that's what I'm speaking about. I think checking the turn is far superior with your hand. Actually, not even with your hand, with your entire range. So no matter what you have, I think checking the turn is better. If you have an absolute monster, if you have the nut flush, I would still check the turn because it gives your opponent a chance to barrel away and bluff at the hand and because it's really unlikely that you're bluffing when you bet twice. The river comes with four clubs, which is a disastrous card because now there's four clubs on the board. You have two red jacks. You pretty much never have the best hand at showdown. It's really, really unlikely. So you bet 125, which is a small bet. You bet half of your remaining stack, but it's smaller than your bet on the turn and very small relative to the pot. You tell me that your thinking was that your opponent would know you are pot committed and that you would instantly call if he shoved for your last $125. So you think that it's unlikely he's gonna bluff you because he's gonna think you are pot committed. I like that you're thinking on multiple levels here. You also say that your bet screams of value. It looks like a value bet. You're betting small, the club came, it looks like you're inducing your opponent to call. And by this logic, you say that your opponent is likely gonna fold. So I commend you for thinking on a higher level and I commend you for thinking about all the possibilities through the hand. But there's one thing I wanna point out in your logic here on the river that I think could use uh, a little improvement. So when you say that you bet 125 under the assumption that your opponent is gonna fold because it looks like you're value betting, what you're hoping to accomplish is that your opponent would fold a better hand than yours. But the question in my mind is what better hands are we hoping that our opponent folds? So if your opponent has a flush, what flushes can he really have? He three bet you preflop, so he probably has suited cards. And if he doesn't have suited cards, he probably has big cards in his hand that aren't suited. So like ace king, king queen, ace queen. And those hands probably have at least one club in them given how he played the hand. So the only hands, those hands are never gonna fold the river if he has like king queen with the king of clubs or of course the nut flush or pocket kings or something like that. He's not gonna fold the river with those hands because they're simply too strong. He's getting too good of a price. So in order for your play to be effective, you have to be hoping your opponent folds a hand that's better than yours. And I don't really know that many hands that are better than yours. Maybe something like ace queen suited with no club could be possible or two red kings or two red aces. But there's just not that many combinations of hands that you're trying to get him to fold here by betting. That being said, I do like your bet in the sense that it's really, really hard for you to be bluffing, but I just don't think it's merited because I don't think there's enough hands that your opponent is folding. And if you do check, I think that your opponent might check behind you. So I'm just not sure I love betting here on the river, but I do like betting the river more than the turn. The turn bet needs to be uh, it's a little questionable, a little too aggressive, but the river bet, it, you do have some good logic and I like that you thought about a lot of things when you bet this river, it shows that you were thinking, it shows that you came to the conclusion, hopefully for the right reasons. So your opponent now decides to put you all in and you think that he's bluffing, but you ultimately decide to fold. Now, he, he goes on to show you a seven of diamonds for a complete bluff, 
which is an absolute crazy way for him to play the hand. Uh, for him to play the hand this way, it means that he would have to hope you would check fold the river or leave yourself enough chips on the river to bet and then fold to his shove, which both of which are really unlikely. Um, it's just too loose on his part. It's too aggressive. It's too crazy on his part. So I think that because he got so out of line here in the hand, you can't expect your opponent to be bluffing here on this river. And even if he is bluffing, he might be bluffing with a hand that's better than yours. Um, like he might be turning a queen into a bluff. So you just can't effectively call the river here. You have to fold when he shoves. And there's just too many, it's too often that he has something like he's supposed to have. He's not supposed to have a seven of diamonds here. So you can't effectively use that as justification to call the river. You have to fold here. If your opponent is getting this far out of line, then you will profitably win money against him by simply adjusting and having stronger hands here because he's getting too out of line to warrant making this play. The overall point in the hand here is that your opponent is very, very aggressive and very prone to take an extreme action, extreme measures to win the pot. I think that the best way that you could accomplish that would be by simply to check raise small on the flop and try to induce him to shove with two overcards, something like ace king or ace queen that he has, or any equity that he flopped. Maybe he flopped a gut shot, maybe he has six seven suited and he's just gonna go all in on the flop. Um, and I think that the other way to induce action would be to simply check call the flop. He's always gonna continuation bet here. He's always gonna fire. And anytime he picks up equity on the turn, he's gonna keep firing again. And he probably is gonna hang himself on the river. The point to keep in mind is that the result is pretty much the same if you just check call the flop. Your opponent's gonna make a big bet. On the turn, he's probably gonna bet again. At that point on the turn, you can either go all in and protect your equity, or you can decide what to do. But either way, the pot is gonna get as big as you want it to get. Your opponent's gonna put a lot of money in the pot attempting to win no matter what. The question is, in the long run, how do we get our opponent to do that the best way possible by making him more likely to put in money when he has nothing? So by doing what you did, which is taking the aggression away from your opponent, I feel like he has to be a very, only a very, very small category of players fall into the trap of floating you twice with absolutely nothing, hoping to take the pot away again later. It's just too high of a level to think on. It's too crazy of a play to take effectively in the long run. So I don't think we could hope that our opponents do that. I think a much more effective way of getting people to bluff you is just by showing weakness and checking the flop and hoping that they get carried away later on in the hand. Anyway, Sam, that's my A to your Q. I hope you took something away from this and I hope you enjoyed the hand of the day. If you guys have questions or hands you would like me to review, feel free to subscribe to my blog, Alec Torelli at alectorelli.com and enter your name and email in the header. Respond to the welcome email. Shoot me your hands or tell me some hands you played or questions you have about poker in general and I will respond to them right here on this channel. If you guys have questions on poker in general, lifestyle, or business, shoot those to me as well. I am making a, a separate category for all those hands and I will answer your questions. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next week. Cheers. Yeah.